I looked up uh, what current journals and doctors are, are saying are the mechanisms that cause nerve damage in diabetes. And uh, they have a standard uh, four or five uh, chemical uh, or functional changes of, of nerve cells that they say are caused by uh, excess glucose. Uh, they, they occur in the presence of excess glucose in the diabetic, but they also occur before or without the presence of glucose. And uh, the deficiency of glucose is one of the things that can uh, induce these same uh, defensive reactions that are, are blamed on sugar. Uh, and so you have to uh, look at the evidence regarding the deficiency of glucose and compare it experiment by experiment with the kind of evidence they propose to explain glucose as the cause. And when you look at all of the events associated with diabetes and the symptoms, you see that hormone changes typically go with it. Uh, stress induces uh, aromatase that increases estrogen production and uh, also directly increases uh, some of the pituitary hormones besides ACTH that drives the adrenals. Uh, stress increases the growth hormone, which um, provides uh, fuel in an emergency by increasing free fatty acids mm. in the circulation. Okay. And the increased estrogen also increases uh, the uh, ACTH and uh, uh, prolactin, several of the uh, stress hormones uh, in the pituitary, but especially growth hormone is, is very closely connected with estrogen. So uh, uh, females have higher not only estrogen but growth hormone and free fatty acids in circulation. Hmm. And it happens that uh, females have uh, much more often problems with uh, the nerve degenerative symptoms of diabetes as well as, as being the ones that have the majority of uh, type 1 uh, diabetes during childhood. Okay. So, so the, uh, the effect of, of the free fatty acids on stress and glucoses or, or any sugars uh, protection against those stress reactions is one of the basic uh, things to look at uh, in avoiding hypoglycemic uh, stress uh, long before uh, the uh, problem reaches the, the stage of producing hyperglycemia. And in hyperglycemia, what you have is the body's adjustment to the inability of cells to get enough energy because they can't oxidize glucose because the fats are blocking it. Right. Uh, that's been known since the 60s, called the Randall cycle, in which uh, free fatty acids block the use of, of glucose. So the body tries to overcome that poisonous effect of the free fatty acids by increasing glucose production. Okay. And, and so it can kind of get around... <laughs> The, the block just by stuffing more huh. glucose into the blood. Uh, so to a great extent, uh, the rising blood sugar shouldn't be fought in itself. The, the cause that uh, interferes with the use of glucose uh, should be concentrated on. Absolutely. And when cells can't get enough glucose, it not only turns on the stress hormones, it turns off the production of thyroid hormone. And so all diabetics, uh, if the cell isn't able to take up and use glucose, the, the liver becomes unable to activate uh, the pre-thyroid hormone thyroxin, turning it into the active T3. Um, so uh, supplementing uh, the active T3 thyroid hormone will cure lots of the uh, so-called uh, effects of diabetes. Um, I had an old friend whose uh, 
uh, toes were uh, basically rotting because of of um, what was diagnosed as uh, uh, diabetes, uh, degenerative nerve and circulation problems in the legs and feet. And two weeks after he had started using Armour Thyroid, uh, his feet recovered completely. Uh, they, the, the, uh, his toes had been black with ulcerated uh, uh, sores going right into the bones, uh, but they completely healed up on, on thyroid. Wow. But uh, we went through uh, three cycles in which his doctor said uh, the armor thyroid was going to increase his blood sugar <laughs> and uh, make his diabetes worse. So uh. he would tell him to stop it. His feet would start rotting again. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so it wasn't just a coincidence. We, we did it three times. Yeah, wow.